Hey everybody, Brandon Costa from Sports Video Group here at the Second Screen Summit Sports. We're here in New York City and we're joined now, I have the pleasure of being joined by Haney Apool, uh, VP Business Operations, NCAA Digital, and Turner Sports. Thanks a lot for being here today and uh, taking part in the uh, great panel discussion earlier today. My pleasure. Uh, you talked about multi-platform sports storytelling in that panel discussion. Uh, what is Turner Sports doing uh, with its various platforms, be it NCAA, even NBA, if you care to comment on that, um, to help add to the linear, linear experience that your team there is already doing a great job with? Well, I think fundamentally we're adding passion for all fans. So when you can have a great, reliable, stable video experience for any of your content across all platforms, you're creating excitement for all those fans, and you're reliable for that. And so it just creates a better experience for, for all fans, and then they go the linear version because they're more passionate about that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a cyclical thing. Um, in addition, so one thing we've done this year for March Madness specifically is we created specific networks um, that were aimed at specific teams and their fans. So if Duke and Wisconsin were in the final, you had a Duke um, net network, and then you had also a Kentucky network that were um, have team fans commentators, okay. so specific right. to each team. Um, in digital, we extended that to the digital platforms, and so people could experience their favorite commentators, um, which I think created a great fan experience. So on top of that, what are some things, uh, because March Madness Live has kind of become one of the benchmarks for how to do yeah. multi-platform television very, very well. Um, it gets great usership, it gets very engaging. So what is it that you think, I is there a thing or two that you guys have done with it that you think has really contributed to its success? Um, I think first and foremost, we focused on the stable and quality video experience because as you heard in our panel earlier, honestly, our, our fans out there are expecting digital video to be as good as broadcast quality, and I think that we focused on that first and foremost. Secondly, I think we continue to innovate. I mean, I think we were one of the first to really integrate social five years ago with um, the Coke Zero Social Arena, which kind of followed the social volume around the Twitterverse and all the different activity um, around the each game. And so, and then we continue to evolve by now in integrating some data and going into real-time data and analytics. So those are the types of things we continue to look to do for the future and to help fans experience March Madness even deeper. So uh, having been a part of this uh, industry for a little while now, what do you kind of see as speaking from someone who's probably from the TV authentication model as opposed to the OTT side, yeah. uh, what do you think is next or what would you like to see happen next on the TV authentication side? What's the next exciting thing that maybe viewers can look forward to? Yeah, I think the most important thing, honestly, is for the back-end technologies to continue to improve because what's made TV authentication um, grow over the past few years have been the idea of really seamless so that if you're a user and you're already in your um, home with Xfinity or with AT&T, Uverse, um, you don't even see any how to authenticate when you come to March Madness Live. It's already done for you because it's already done it through your modem. Those types of things that are the mo least friction um, mm -hmm. you can create for the user, I think they're the things I'm really excited about. And they're all coming. All right, so we're glad to hear that they're coming because that's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Really appreciate you joining us here today and for taking a few minutes Thank with us right you. now. Uh, for you. more from uh, today's show, you can use the hashtag S3Sports. And for complete coverage, visit sportsvideo.org.